Hi, this is Jared from Shunome, and this afternoon uh, we're going to talk about dimensions. I'm going to cover some super basic stuff and then also some other little tricks and tips and cheats. Um, so hopefully you'll find something useful. So let's start. So we got here, dimension tool. There's probably also a lot I'm not going to cover, but anyways. So dimension tool. One thing you should know, um, on the Mac, if you hold down the command key, PC, I'm sure it's some other thing. Um, after you select a dimension, you can go ahead and add nodes to it. This is something I don't think I knew for a while while using ARCHICAD. What's nice is it can be both um, a linked node, or it can just be um, some static node to nothing. Okay, so that's the first thing we're going to cover. What's next? Removing a string. So, just like you can add a, um, a node, you can also both delete a node and delete a whole string. So for instance, if we didn't like this 2, 5, and a half, I select it, hit delete, it's gone. Uh, if instead I just wanted to delete this node, if I select that node, that's gone. Um, now, say we made a mistake and I want these two to be back together, if I select that and then hit control, um, we're gonna, first I've added that, but let's see. Can do this. Um, let's add back that wall. So we've got here um, two separate dimensions. Uh, if I select one, hold down command, and click on the other, they're now become one dimension string. So that's great. Turning two into one. It's going to look over at my list. What's next? Um, okay, so you should also know that when you're making dimension strings, if you want a dimension to the core, uh, we've got this button here that's going to change it to the core of a wall. And that's good to know is that when you are doing a new dimension string, you never want to try and hit the core, you just want to hit the outside of a wall and hit OK. And then either before or after you do that dimension string, hit that. So if I knew before, click that button, do that. What's nice about this dimensioning to the core and not trying to hit the core and getting it um, is it's linked to the wall and we can turn that on and off. Let's see what comes next. Um, okay, so now we're going to talk about some cheats. So, every so often in a project, you're going to have a faked dimension. We're not going to go into reasons why you should never have that or why you do. Every couple of projects, it happens. So if you're going to have a fake dimension, let's do it smart. So looking at my screen, can you tell maybe what dimension is not like the others? Um, it's this one right here, this blue guy. So I've changed the custom text, type something in. And then here's the trick. I changed the text pen color to something different. If we change my pen set to what I'm going to do for printing, which is black, it looks the same. But when we're working, we can know automatically looking here that, OK, something's going on here. It's um, a custom text, so I've changed that. Um, you could also even do that with static dimensions. Maybe you have a color for override cheated dimensions, say this blue, and then one for static, say it's uh, green or something. Um, I don't really have many static dimensions. I don't worry about it, um, and I rarely have these. But still, if you're going to do it, do it smart. Um, next thing, so um, with custom text, uh, this is not that new feature anymore, but it's worth going over. Under custom text, if you leave this little guy here, measured value, you can um, type in whatever you want. So that's that's great. And again, if you really want to, you could change that text to something just so you know that it's um, not 100% automatic. Um, where are we next? Oh, this is something you should never do. I've just exploded this. Um, text string, it's now individual lines. Um, it's doable. I, You don't want to ever do it. Um, but to do that, you go up to edit, reshape, explode. You cry a little bit, but now it's not dimension anymore. Um, again, once every like 10 projects, there's one instance where you just need to fake something. Again, don't let that happen, but that's how you do it. Um, I'm just looking at my list again. Uh, okay, 
So if you want, you can take a dimension string, and this guy is all linked and automatic. Um, you can select individual nodes and make those static dimensions. So now when I move this, that wall, that part of the dimension is static, and that's not. So it's doable. Now the problem is it's not undoable. So um, I just did the undo button, that undoes it, but if you know later on you can't select this and make it static, you'd have to delete those nodes, and then um, select dimension string, click on the wall, and re-add them. Uh, don't know what I was going to talk about here. I think just making that whole guy static, you select that, now it's a static dimension attached to nothing. Um, now if you want a dimension to things that are nowhere, uh, one way to do it is with hotspots. So instead of having walls here, um, I've just got little hotspots. It's nice thing about hotspots is they don't um, they don't print, so you're not going to see those anywhere. Um, just going to blow through the list here. Okay, so here's the static dimension. Um, now, sometimes with a static dimension, you want to just move one node, but you can't do that directly in ArchiCAD. If I select that node, I can't move it. I can select this whole dimension string. So here's the trick. If you select a node on a static dimension, and then you select just some other element, um, say this wall, and now if I move this wall one foot, it moves the static dimension with it. Now this wall and that static dimension are totally unlinked, but by selecting that node and an element that can move, we can then move this static dimension. Um, this is like a great little trick for when you do have that static dimension, you just need to like shift it over a little bit. So um, that's one of my favorite cheats in ArchiCAD. Um, okay, so um, when you are working, sometimes you're not dimensioning to outsides of things; you're dimensioning to center line. Um, that's doable if you have set up a center line for a wall. So because the hot, uh, not the hot. Um, the reference line for this wall is right there. Um, I can snap to that and, and link to that. Likewise, um, you can link to the center line of a window or a door. So that's that's good to know. Okay, with dimensions um, over here in the info box, there's a couple different construction methods. We're typically used to doing this: six and a half inches, two five and a half, six and a half, two five and a half. But you can also set it so that they are cumulative. So this point is three feet from the start, this is three six and a half from the start, this is six. So if you've noticed along the side, these numbers counting up, um, this is actually a, it's hard to select, but this is a dimension string as well. I've just um, changed it a lot so you can't see it. Okay, we're almost at the end here. Um, so adding um, Unicode, this is something that came up in the forum recently. Um, you can't copy and paste Unicode things. Um, so what that means is if we go to the text and we select some weird symbol like this null set, we want to copy that. We're going to go in here and paste it. It's going to give us a question mark. So what you need to do um, is, again, this is for a Mac, if you show the uh, keyboard viewer here. Um, this is a function you can turn on. You can start pressing control and option and command and finding um, what series of buttons gives you the null sign. So for this it's option O. So if we now go here and do option O, we get that. Um, likewise that's how I got over here. Let's close this. Um, the infinity sign there. Now this actually this plus and minus um, is something you can copy and paste from the character chart, so I can select that, copy it, um, and paste that in. Okay, so I think that covers just about everything I wanted to talk about because this is getting really long, and I don't think I'm gonna do a second take on this. So I um, hope you learned something. Um, I know this is some really basic stuff, but it's good to go over this and know all the ins and outs of dimensions. And then this last guy is like the bonus feature. Um, 
Manubim created a floating static um, dimension object. I've done a blog post about it before, so I've just gotten it to mimic um, my dimensions. It's this uh, floating dimension. You can find it for free on bimcomponents.com um, or search. I think I wrote about this on BIM Engine as well. But this is a, a great dimension tool, and it's got all the kind of features you want, and it's a static dimension, so it replaces some of the tricks I have. Um, but if you're not setting this up and you just want to deal with uh, a static dimension trick um, of being able to move individual nodes by moving an object with it, you can do that as well. So thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I will ideally have some more videos soon and obviously tons of blog posts. Thanks.